guys, welcome back to another awesome special episode where I have brought with me, again, for I don't know how many times now, but uh, it's, a, it's a regular now for this podcast. It's, uh, it's your goss. What's up, guys? Hello. Jamie's, thank you for having me again. Yeah. And I will gladly do that every time you want to call me and do stuff. No, you're, you're very much appreciated. Thank you so much. This time round, Yorgos is going to show us his Teclovosan Esteem Magnate deck. So we're just going to go through this. And Yorgos is going to tell us what his thoughts are as a starting point when Bright Lights enters the scene and you're interested in playing Teclovosan. You want to hear what this absolute Greek god has to say. So, let's break this down. Teclos Vossen, you may play Evos from the Banished Zone. Really good. It's a, it's a, that gives you some real good um, sort of card advantage. Kind of like Chain, yeah, where you've just got some stuff in the Banished Zone that you can use. And he's got his ability, once per turn, instant, cost three resources. You may pay your next Evo this turn as if it were an instant. And when you do, that's the key bit, when you do, draw a card. When I remember first reading this, I thought, oh, do I just pitch three and draw a card straight away? No, <laughs> no, no, no. You've got to have the... It's going to cost you, basically, for the smaller Evos, like five resources. Yeah. And then you've got the instant ones, which, you know, there's, there's, there's quite a few. But we'll go through the Evos as we go through. But what do you reckon to this hero ability? I mean, first of all, the... In the whole thing about blocking with equipment and then somehow getting them into the banish zone mm -hmm. and then playing them this whole play pattern feels amazing i mean it's something quite new to have access to this way of playing because as you said we had chain but chain was doing that on the offense mm -hmm. like does something similar but on the defense and it's so interesting what you know the interactions that occur there and the way you're supposed to do your turn cycles yeah it's a I've, I've noticed that um the hero abilities lately have been quite strong like even outsiders like the hero abilities have a lot of power behind it but they're not giving you like in tales of aria or or monarch like loads of really crazy cards on top of these really strong hero abilities they're like here's we're going to keep this cool strong ability but the cards in your deck have a little bit more nuance to it to actually push it over the edge kind of like you know when you look at riptide's ability kind of similar isn't it you know strong it's got good it's got the words behind it are really good it's just that deck side of things and i'm curious what you're when we go through this how this teclavosan deck sort of shapes up I mean, that, it, with Tekla Vossen, I think it's uh, definitely the case because it's something we will get into. But you on, at the moment, we only have two different base equipment. So we only have two different type of suit equipment that when you transform, you can still keep transforming on top of them. Mm. So the options, if you want to do that really defensive deck and keep transforming are pretty limited at the moment. And I mean, this deck could have a whole new angle if it was... Even one more suit of any cost, any color, with any ability that was base and you could still transform it. But it's something to look up into in the future. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. not a problem. Now, um, what's kind of interesting is that you're, um, for the first time ever, because this hero is so based around equipment, your equipment suite is um, pretty easy to go through, right? It's just the Teclo base arms, they, and chest, head, legs, have blade break one key thing here is that they've got base arm base attached to it so um i take it this is just you're starting off quite naked pretty, pretty much yes i mean the first the first decision here is that there also is of course the proto base equipment that mm. they do not have the one armor and the blade break but uh, unless the meta evolves into a way where is the too much interaction with equipment, you maybe want to transform and only run the proto equipment. Mm. But sometimes you do this cute line where you block a breaking point with the arms, for example, while they have blade break. And after damage calculation, you can instantly activate the Clovosen, equip a new equipment. And when that happens, the equipment returns back. So the blade break doesn't trigger. Okay. And you and you cheat some 
more, you know, block value. So you have pretty great interaction with breaking points. With mm. this technopost yeah. list, you have great interaction with breaking points because you have a lot of ways of adding plus one, plus two, you know, to yeah. your block values. But, but it all determines on whether you've got the actual equipment in your hand and if they're in the banished zone. And there is a cost to it because the cards that you you almost feel like yeah you know you're you're blocking for one but you spend you have to sort of spend a card to then use his hero ability to then cheat another card in so there is an argument of you could just block the two cards <laughs> well yeah obviously this line is way better where when the opponent is a white deck i mean mm. this line doesn't really make a lot of sense when the opponent is a tall deck i mean so if you know if i does three go again and you just block for one and you have got a new card out of the Toklovosan ability and you can just, you know you can still block the next attack it's pretty free mm. value while you are developing your board but yeah i mean it's still gotta, there is still a cost obviously it's it's a it's a bit more complex than what it looks you think it's good but sometimes you got to weigh up the value and then you've got the tech player leveler um his mini gun again quite naked doesn't do anything until you start getting some evos on the board so how's your what's your thoughts with this weapon so for at first read obviously this weapon when you get to three or more evos is way above rate compared to other things we've seen i mean at four evos this is a one cost three go again weapon, which mm. is great. The only problem with the Klovosin is that uh, the rest of the curve of his deck doesn't really work well with one extra resource mm. because most of his great attacks cost three. Mm. So most of the time you use the weapon during the later stages of the game where if you have an extra card and you don't want to put it in arsenal, you just pitch it into weapon and then do your play. Yeah, That's what happens most of the time. Okay. Uh, Still, the value is pretty great. Cool, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Right, so that is your just starting main board side bits of uh, Teclavosan. So let's go through the main portion of the deck. So I think it's probably safe to say that we should be talking about maybe some Evos first. What do you think? Yeah, obviously we should start with Evos. So I... I uh... I put it the sideboard in this deck that way. So the 48 cards in this main deck, I think should be the starting point to any defensive type Teclavosan deck. And honestly, to any Teclavosan deck in general. I mean, mm. it's a good starting point. That's why I put it all the cards that are not 100% in on the sideboard. And maybe a few blues, but there's that's another story. So if I... For me, if you want to build the Teclavosan deck and you need a base, you can just get these 48 cards and it's a great starting point. From there, you can add boost cards, you can add pretty much anything you like. More defensive stuff, less defensive stuff, more boost, more scrap. I mean, there are so many options about building the hero. So cool. I think these 48 cards are the base. All right, nice one. So um, we'll start with the reds. The Evo Sentry base arms, chest, head, legs, they're all the same battle worn two um and they've got again keyword here is they've got base on that so you can build on top of it what's your thoughts with these uh red cost cards that block for two in your hand but also yeah do you know what i mean what's your thoughts i mean when you do this line of blocking for two and then you can scrap it and then on next turn you can play it you feel pretty great mm. i mean you do a slightly worst block from hand, but then you scrap and get the card for free. And then you lose a card and you get three block value, which is again on rate. So effectively, you miss one point of value in order to get one more evil, which most of the time is pretty great worth. The problem is that a lot of times these hands get clanky. Mm. And the problem at the moment the Klovosan, I think, has is that there are very specific lines when he can actually equip equipment without missing too much on the turn cycles. Because if you want to, as, as you said before, if you want to equip a Evo Sentry base head, for instance, at the opponent's turn, it needs to blues to do. You, you need to yeah. blues in that card to do that. 
I mean, or in your turn, what are you going to do? You're just going to do make an evil base head pass. Yeah. It's it's a bit clunky. So the reason now the reasoning behind why we have three copies of the arms and three copies of the base head is I think the best win condition for this type of Teclavosen is to go out with singularity. I mean, right. I think you need singularity to win el- most of the matches. So, because if your win condition is singularity, you need the chest and the legs to be the majestic ones, to be the soul steel equipment. Mm. You, otherwise, you cannot transform into singularity. Your turn is just pretty weak. That's why we have more copies of the arms and more copies of the head because we are fine going off into singularity while we have equipped central sentry arms and head, but there is no way we want the chest and the legs to be equipped when we want to go into singularity. Okay, okay, fair enough. I was going to ask why was there only one copy of these. Do you not find it that it might get a little bit tricky? Like I've seen some lists that just run two, 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 two. I mean, literally today I still had two, two in each, but again, even, I mean, we, we play the game. I mm-hmm. mean, even versus a random aggressive deck, your win condition is still singularity. Since your win condition is still singularity, you do not care about transforming into the sentry chest. You need to transform into the soul chest and you need to transform into the soul boots because otherwise you will not have a turn when you transform into when you play the singularity sure sure i mean okay. i think the closest comparison to the way this deck is built has to be saber bolting i mean i get saber bolting vibes all, <laughs> all day with the levels i mean set up your pcs do your thing and afterwards Try to find a way to win the game while having performed your combo, which your combo in this case is, you know, singularity. All right, awesome, awesome. So I've seen that you've put three copies of Fabricate. How come? I mean, I think I was pretty low on this card because sometimes it's clunky, sometimes, you know, a lot of the modes feel bad, but this card is great because it speeds you up. Mm-hmm. It's an insanely good card for Arsenal because whenever you have an excessive or you have an evil, you can just, you know, cycle through with Fabricate. And almost all of the options are relevant. Okay. I mean, it offers you a small amount of protection to equipment hate, which I'm hoping if you want to play the Clovos and there is not too much equipment hate, but still it can get you out of a bad spot with the with equipping a new equipment from uh, the sideboard Mm -hmm. from the in case you get (laughs) t-boned yeah in case you get t-boned or something like that but most most of the time you are doing plus one uh, armor on your evil permanence Mm -hmm. and you banish an evil from your hand in order to draw a card so effectively you banish an evil that you want to play in a later turn and you get some free armor value compared to how many evils you have equipped at the moment so a great interaction with fabricate is that because if you have an evil still soul memory for instance and you have already blocked twice mm. you can give plus one armor and block again and it will get a third counter but temper won't trigger because by the end of that combat chain, it will still have one armor. So yeah. a lot of times it gives you one extra block with equipment, which is pretty good value, to be honest. Yeah, no, that's really good. That's really cool. Scrap Trader, three copies of this. Um, so for each item or equipment that you scrap, you get two resources from this. This seems like a pretty straightforward play pattern of just trash two pieces of Evo, game for resources, Let's go Tekla Voss and Instant, put that in. Is that is that about right? It's exactly that. And honestly, a big part about this deck is to actually... Scrap Trader has an insane value. Mm. You just need to set the game into a state where you can actually get the value. To have a free arsenal slot because you will be activating Tekla Voss and to actually have two equipment in uh, the graveyard preferably the blue equipment. I mean, the best line of use for Scrap Trader is to have an extra blue, have Scrap Trader, Scrap Trader to equipment, activate the Clavosant, and with a four resource, you get equip a blue equipment. That's 
and you get a new card to put in Arsenal. I mean, the value there is insane. Mm. It's one of the best value turn cycles, you know, Teclavosen can do. Cool, cool. Um, you've went through, what, 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 do you want to, should we save Singularity to last? Yeah, of course. Let's sure. save Singularity to the last. We'll, 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 <laughs> we'll do the, um, so we'll just, I know that we're skipping over, like I've talked about Fabricate and Scrap Trader just about, but the Evo, Soul Steel Controller, the, like the blue bot threes, these are, yeah, you you just need all of them in your deck, don't you? They're all just really good. Yeah, I mean, these are your bread and butter. I mean, these are your, they block for three from hand, so you don't even lose value when you do all your scrap things. They are great to be scrapped because you can just play them. They are great, you know. I mean, that's what you're looking to do. They are the best evos you have access to. And the fact that they are blue and block three, I mean... You literally have no reason of not running them. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. What would you say the best one of the four is? I imagine you're going to say the head. The most powerful effect probably is the head, yes. But, I mean, as I said, you, you need the chest and the legs in order to transform into singularity. Mm. So the effect you want to trigger the most, of course, is the head by far. It's, it's not even close. But apart from that, the only problem is that you need the chest and legs in the singularity turn. Okay. Yeah, because of the action point and the resources. All right, cool. So um, they're your Evos. Um, let's go through some of the... So you've got the Terminator tank and War Machine, which seems to be your kind of basically uh, your big turn end game stuff. You know, one of them is basically nine overpower cnc and the other one is nine overpower pummel <laughs> yeah i mean the value in this card is insane and i think they work great with your game plan because they trade the card and you really need that because most of the time when you get to your four evos your opponent probably has a huge life lead so mm -hmm. they don't really care about the damage so you actually need the effect to slightly disrupt them so you can accumulate you know the value of the poor evo payoffs you have okay cool cool um so we'll go through some of these blues now so we've got one copy of junkyard dog and you got i see a so, couple of one costs so we'll just go through these one costs scrap compactor scrap professor prospector junkyard dog magnetic protocol start with the dog how come you've only got one copies I mean, okay, uh, it's not like you. I'm running one copy. It's like any single of these blues that are X1, they are pretty fine to run three copies depending on what the meta is looking like mm. or depending on what you want to do. So I love the three copies of Junkyard Dog Blue, but sometimes, you know, you don't want too many scraps or sometimes you might never get a two-card play to do the five scrap hand. And... You know, the same goes for the Scrap Compactor and the Scrap Prospector. It really depends on what the rest of the field looks like. If you actually are on a more mid-range field and you want the value, Junkyard Dog is the best. Junkyard Dog Blue is a great card to swing for five and scrap a card. It's effectively E-Strike with draw a card, mm. which we know the value is pretty great. But, you know, if it's a more aggressive environment, so you need to block a lot, so you can never afford to keep more than one card to scrap, you need way more, many more copies of Scrap Compactor and Scrap Pro Prospector. Mm, okay. Now, Magnetic Protocol Blue is a pretty great value card. It's a three for five that blocks three, which I think is only great if the metagame translates into a more of a mid-range thing. It's slightly better into Dromai because you might snipe their Furnace, which is relevant. Mm. And it's pretty insane in the mirror match if, by God forbid, you know, this becomes <laughs> a Teclovosen meta game. I mean, and my, yeah. my Gennady Protocol becomes the, the most expensive card of the set. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, 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 that's pretty cool. And then you got one copy of Steel Street Enforcement. Steel Speed Enforcement is a weird card in the Clovosian. The value is insane because most of the time when you want to block, you will have at least two or three Evos. So blocking with a blue card for four or even five, hmm. it's insane. It's how you keep being alive during the later stages of the game. 
the huge problem with steel street enforcement is that whenever you activate the Klevosian, you draw a random card yeah. that most of the time will be either arsenaled or, you know, blocked. And if you want to arsenal the card, still street enforcement cannot go into an arsenal because unfortunately it's a block yeah. and not a defense reaction. Yeah, I know. It's a pretty awkward one. <laughs> I, I learned that the hard way when I put <laughs> it into arsenal and went, oh, guess I've lost that. And then this one copy of T-Bone. I mean, T-Bone is for the same reasons. I mean, if, uh, you know, the meta game translate, first of all, boost is pretty decent on Teclavosen. The boost mm -hmm. card, boosting and banishing an Evo, I mean, that card value is insane. The reason I do not have many other boost cards is because this version of the deck is slightly built like a bolting where your only win condition effectively is singularity. So we singularity. So we want to reduce the chances of actually banishing singularity because I think you have no way of winning <laughs> if that happens. You, you lost all your um you've lost all your um Luminaris ascensions. So yeah, I mean it's like done. banishing Luminaris. It's like charging Luminaris or something. Oh yeah, it's done, isn't it? <laughs> so I can see that the scrap popper, liquid cooled mayhem, and the mechanical strength as well. They just um, good value uh, blues basically that block for four. And the uh, I can see the liquid cool mayhem is pretty straightforward. The more evos you have, the less it costs. Pretty straightforward. Uh, mechanical strength again this just gets more value in terms of its attack power depending on how many evos you got pretty straightforward but why did you go for three copies of scrap hopper i think scrap hopper has to be the best one out of the zero cost evos because the quicken token you can actually bank the quicken token as the clavosen for a long time because you might attack but your next attack might be in three turns and mm. in three turns you might have you know, you might be able to, you might have gotten into four evos, you might gotten the tempo, you might, you know, trade a lot of damage or only block with equipment in order to do a huge turn like, you know, Terminator tank with go again into Command and Conquer or, mm -hmm. you know, or... it really helps you with these pivot turns. That's why I think out of the other zero cost, it's probably the best one. What's the interaction between the Quicken token and Singular and uh, the Teclavos and the Mechapotent? Which I know we're jumping over. We'll jump over to Singularity now. So if you've got all your Evos, you bank them all up. Your hero, it comes in, your hero basically transforms into this badass, which has <laughs> got to be the coolest thing in the game at the minute. It's only, we thought Lexi was really cool. Uh, not Lexi, uh, Leviah, which is still really cool. The fact that she's got two different modes. And now we've just got this like transforming hero um, era that we're in now. Um, yeah, Ultron, right? So, yeah, it's, it's amazing. So let's... Um, is, is it worth going through this and then the sideboard? Um, I mean, imagine this is just your game plan, isn't it? So this is how you win, this is how you win the game. Um, yeah, so I noticed that the Quicken token and this doesn't go away. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the Quicken token when you attack with the Clavosian doesn't really go away, but um, most of the time you don't really care because your Mechanologist attack action already get Gurgens from yeah, the Clavosian. True, true. So I'm just you cannot attack twice in a turn, though. That, that's the only thing. Oh, okay. You cannot... So the Quicken token doesn't go away, but it doesn't get used either. It's just, yeah, okay, cool. Um, I remember we played our game and it stayed there. I was like, Oh my god! Is this thing just constantly got going? No, I read that wrong. So, but it's cool though that it's like, yeah, we're not actually spending this. We'll just spend this on uh, another thing. Anyway, so um, let it rip. Take the boss and the Metropolitan. Let me rip. Let's hear it, Yorgos. Tell me oh, about oh, this guy. Sorry, sorry. Tell okay, me so, about this guy. So, as an action with three cards, you banish two cards from your soul and you attack. Your attack has a six power, and whenever you attack a hero with this, they discard a card. Your Mechanologist attack action cards get go again, and you count as having four Evos. And on top of that, it even blocks for six with Battlehorn. This dude does everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everything. There is not a line of text which is not insanely relevant. I mean, the first thing to note is that as in Soul, 
whenever you transform cards and whenever you play singularity and you transform all of your equipment all of these cards that you transformed and your hero and your weapon get under this card and become your soul so at minimum well, even the proto base stuff even the base or even what? the base so stuff, even the yeah. techlo base arm stuff okay so you effectively even if you do the minimum transformations and you've played zero copies of fabricate this game mm -hmm. you have six attacks two out of no five attacks two out of each uh, equipment your weapon and your hero right okay so you have five attacks minimum with uh, this guy which mm. should be enough most of the time to close up a game okay cool and then um how does the evo the steel soul um stuff work with this when it says here when this transforms into an evo with a different name your hero gets plus one if that evo is a hero instead this triggers twice do we need to set up another uh base legs again and then equip another one again to get the double trigger no 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 when when you play singularity every single of the steel soul equipment you have actually trigger twice so if you have the evo steel soul memory you actually go up to five intellect because it triggers twice if you have the stole seal processor, you actually get six resources. If you have the Evo stole, oh, and that's only on the. Power. Is that only when you play Singularity on that turn, and then after that, that, does that it, and then turn. it will just go away? Yes, but that's that's what you want. That's why you need the chest piece and the arms because if you transform with the blue chest piece and the blue arms when you play Singularity, you actually get two action points out of the legs and six resources. To attack twice with Teclavos and instantly. Right, got ya. Now that makes a lot more sense. Okay, I can see why this guy, when you just play it, he just uh, he goes off, and then it just gets incredibly difficult to deal with it. And then the next, then you end your turn with five um, cards in hand, and then after that, it starts to slow down a bit with your three intellect. Is that about right? It, that's about right. But yeah, you need to you get an instant burst because you also have the six armor piece battle horn that you can use to block a lot of the opponent's attack so if for some reason the opponent survives this onslaught you might be in a tough spot probably meaning you lose the game you cannot keep up with the opponent if they draw four cards and you draw three cards and you are you know running out of the glavos and activations also you know it gets pretty rough but most of the time the damage from the war machines and the terminator tanks and mm -hmm. the clavosen ramp up pretty greatly so it's you can instantly get them from 30 to five in three turns oh, wow okay that's really cool uh, what, what an amazing end game yeah so then you got a pretty big inventory uh which is what we used to call the sideboard which is now called inventory um let's go through this a little bit so you got your proto space arms chest legs heads and whatnot uh, we'll do the equipment. That's just there is plan B backup, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. And also, if you see a deck that you know runs a lot of equipment hate, oh, let's yeah. say a mechanologist, you can just start the game with these. You are not bound to run the techlo base equipment if you're afraid your opponent has interaction. And also, it's the one safety mechanism you have for Tomeltai because mm. for Tomeltai it's pretty easy to destroy one of your equipment so with Dromai still around you I think you need to commit the four cards in the inventory to have the proto to have access to the proto base equipment that makes sense that makes sense and then you got this one copy of Visitronic Model I which is the arcane barrier why have you gone for this so even versus Icelander, I ended up having the game plan that you still need Singularity to win. Yeah. And uh, But you cannot afford to run any Arcane Barrier because how are you going to transform? The great thing about Visitronic model is that the action, you can basically at will destroy your headpiece mm. and equip a new proto-based equipment from the sideboard. So... During the early stages where you want to block until you get your equipment to banish and you equip the rest of the Evo suit, 
you want the Visitronic model to actually block arcane damage. But when you get to the point where you want to transform and kill them, you can just pop it off, play a fabricate, equip a new proto base equipment, get your headpiece and go off. Okay, okay. Um, that moves us kindly onto this Rusted Relic, a card I've never thought I'd ever see play <laughs> in the history of ever. You've jammed it in. I take it that is for the wizards and oh, what about the rune blades, man? That feels a little bit rough if you just don't have it and you're just getting loads of arcane. I mean, rune blades probably are a pretty rough matchup for this deck because the wizard solution, it's not even a solution. The, the wizard game plan doesn't apply to the rune blades because you cannot pay to, to block any single rune chant. I mean, you're just getting. <laughs> destroyed at that point if you need to pay two to block a single rune cent. Yeah. So most of the time with the Clavosian you don't have many things to do during your turn. So Rusted Relic is slightly less punishing compared to decks that we have previously. So the second you've got one. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now I can actually play the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> So um, for for the wizards, would you just put all three copies in against wizards to try and build up that um that that point of going? Oh, okay, even if I transform, I've still got some A B. Exactly. Cool. Cool. So, um, three copies of Pulse Wave Protocol. How come? I'm, when's this coming in? I I think this. I mean, when even when you transform into. When, when you play Singularity, sometimes you need some extra push to actually finish a game. Mm -hmm. And Pulse Wave Protocol is great because it actually disrupts the opponent. And that's really important towards... Because, again, when you get at 4 EVOs, most of the time you have, like, a 22 life difference. I mean, mm -hmm. most of the time that's what happens. The opponent is at 35 and you are at 13 or 11, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So actually pushing some damage and disrupting them is how you can actually, you know, finally get this value and win the game. Cool. cool. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's really good. And you can just tell by the text that, um, you know, just pitch three, come to me six, give me a card. Like, you know. Yeah, reveal your hand, I pick, I can see your next turn and disrupt it as much as possible. Very strong, very strong. Um, we'll also, we'll go to the Annihilator engine. A card I just don't think I've ever seen, apart from the artwork, is got to be just just absolutely nutty. Why did you pick what? Why is these three copies coming in, and when are you playing that? I mean, there are some matchups like Dromai or you know Bravo where you might just run out of juice, mm. and three for nine is probably you know one of the best values you can get. And there is a minor, uh, there is a minor upside here as well. That's one of the reasons why I consider running three T bones, three blue T bones in the main deck, mm. because the interaction with this and blue T bone is actually pretty great. Yeah, no, because, because, yeah, because... No, no, no. no, that was wrong. No, that's no. wrong. Oh, okay, we're learning. <laughs> so you were hoping yeah. it's 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 the. It's what's defending this attack card, this card, isn't it's it? This yeah, attack. Yeah. It's it not... works with it works with the new magnetic majestic. You, the you are hoping it's um, the roundhouse kick or whatever the spinning. Yeah, wheel. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> still, okay. I mean, annihilator engine is still pretty great into the Clavosan though. Yeah, sure, I mean, if, still, nine. if for some reason <laughs> the Clavosan becomes the meta game, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. yeah, just destroy that. Sure, uh, command and conquer. Yeah, I mean, we all know that. When is this coming in? I, most of the time, this card is in, to be honest. I think this is almost, you know, if you are planning to play this low-value, grindy, blocky Teclavosen, it's actually one of the few lines you can do when the opponent gives you tempo in the early game and you mm -hmm. don't have your Evo on the Banish Zone or you don't have a good scrap card or you don't have, you know... You want to interact with the opponent because even... You don't want to start attacking when they are at 40. No, that thing. So, commanding conquer is probably one of the best cards because most of the time the opponent will try to set up turns. Mm. So, actually having a card that disrupts them when they try to set up turn, it's slightly better than it's you know, in it's, general. It's it's the few cards in the game that actually have that good cost curve into the tech level. 
once you start oh, as well yeah, yes yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's true as well so one copy of e-strike now, again with e-strike fate for sin junkyard dog red and light cooled mayhem red sure any of these cards could be three copies and one something else i mean every single one of these cards feel pretty great in the clavosent and have different uses okay so e strike obviously helps you dig deeper you can do a lot of five draw a card if you have an evo you already have in hand so you don't need it so you can just throw it away or you know just try to find your singularity faster mm -hmm. fate fortune mm -hmm. is an extra d-react junkyard dog is an extra good scrub that attacks and Liquid Cool Mayhem is actually one of the better payoffs after you transform into Singularity. Yeah, because zero for six. Yeah, zero for six, go again, that blocks for three. That's, I mean, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, the, the value of the red Liquid Cool Mayhem, but that's what I mean. It really depends on how the meta is going to shape. So if you need more defensive stuff, you go for Fate Force. And if you need to be faster on your combo, you go with Junkyard Dog or E-Strike. If you need more payoffs because there are so many defensive decks and they fatigue you you go for liquid cold mayhem so it really depends on how the meta will look like after you know the first wave of uh, bright light decks awesome and then three copies of sink below i mean for a defensive deck you you have three copies of sink below i mean i mean obviously and also again there is the this extra i think i would never cut the three copies of sink below on this defensive list because Again, it helps you toss away the extra evils you have in your hand that you don't really need, mm. that you don't want to see. It helps you put into your second cycle your good attacks so you don't run out when you actually transform into Singularity. So Sing Below is a pretty great card and a deck that's combo-y yeah. and wants to build second cycle. And then you, and your last cards in here oasis respite i wasn't expecting this but i guess you're probably lower health than most people and is there times where that you know oasis respite works really well when you're a hero that uses resources on in defensive ways so like you know um icelander oldham being those heroes for example to just go okay well i'm going to be pitching a card to do this which would be a rampart or whatever and then this like one floating resource i've got is the oasis respite that's just great use of this does this work with tech Austin? i mean it's uh, a lot of times you have some inefficient plays with because as you said you have some excess resources so using oasis respite there is great mm -hmm. and also one of the main reasons i also want to include three copies of oasis respite at the moment is that because between oasis and uh, visitronic you can actually prevent a lot of you know disruptive arcane stuff from islander and i think that's pretty relevant to maintain your life total versus islander yeah no 100 percent. i mean it's the uh it's the sink below against wizards isn't it let's be honest yeah yeah so you, you should be running this and then if there's is there times you would you know you just got to assess when would you run this into anything other than wizards or is this just exclusively wizards I mean, for instance, when we played with Bolton today, I included that because, you know, it's a way to block Bolton that's not triggering his charge. Yeah. So it's pretty good there. And yeah. I guess the same could be the case for Dorinthia, if you because you can actually prevent her attack without triggering reprise, which has to be pretty relevant. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. No, that's really good. And that's it. I mean... That's everything. That's that's the whole deck. I mean, is there any sort of summarizing thoughts? What do you think is, um, like, in this particular build that you've got, which is very much focused around making him the Mechropotent, um, what do you think this deck's strengths and weaknesses are? Obviously, your biggest weakness are the super aggressive decks because you most of the time you do not interact with your opponent during the earlier stages of the game so they can pretty much perform their game plan and if their game plan is explosive and they are you know these aggressive decks that love having four cards into the offense every turn mm. you're having a pretty rough time so yeah but the thing is that with any mid-range deck where you can actually pull off the, uh, you can actually pull off the singularity I don't think they can survive you. I mean, I've never, I haven't played too many games, but 
I, whenever you get singularity, if you do not die on the following turn, it's pretty hard for the opponent to come back when you're beating them with Terminator tanks into attacking with Teclavos and discarding more cards. After I get three more cards, I, I mean, even your blue cards are zero for four. Go again into attack with Teclavos and for ten, another six, discard the card. I mean. The the late game of this deck is insane. Yeah, no, absolutely. So more mid rangey, better against the slower decks. Although, ultimately, do you think this will just struggle into heroes like like Dromai? Yeah, probably Dromai is going to be pretty rough. But the thing is that you know you have a lot of evasion. Mm. You have a lot of evasion between the nine power overpowers. The discard of, uh, you know, Teclavosen with the Mechropontent. I mean, you can actually leak damage. And the good thing about Romai is that you have a pretty decent amount of uh, six power cards. I mean, mm. if you also want to focus into Dromai, and in this list, for instance, you go for three Liquid Cool Mayhem's Red and three Junkyard Dogs. And you add the three CNCs and the three Annihilator engines and the three Pulse Wave protocols. I mean, you have you will maintain your life total. And if you transform while at 28 and take your slow time and build up this equipment, I mean, you might be able to kill even a Dromai. Mm. Okay, fair enough. Well, dude, thank you so much for taking your time to break this down. I, again, I'll throw you up a link to check out uh, Yorgos's stream. He streams quite uh, quite a lot, regularly, about like two or three times a day, roughly. A, a week, you mean? A, a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A week. and then yeah he's uh if you want to be watching him playing this deck which i have been doing today um and we've had a couple of games um and all these other great decks that he comes up with you love Kurt concocting lots of different decks you've seen you just do a riptide one as well yeah, i mean that's the exciting part whenever a new set comes out that we have so many new toys to play around with yeah so check it out link below and thank you so much Yorgos, for taking your time going through this the deck links also below um put it together see what you think and leave a comment if there's any sort of other suggestions or any you know any feedback you want to throw out thank you so much for checking out and thank you Yorgos, for being here thanks for having me once again oh I'll, I'll see you soon i'll see you see but you. i'll see you soon for sure for the next one <laughs> peace out everyone Bye.